Corner beans, what is better when it comes to hunting whitetails? We asked Justin Hollinsworth, and I share my opinion on what is better for chasing whitetails. Hope you guys enjoy this. Here we go. All right, Jake, you're the ad guy in the office. <laughs> we get hammered. We hammer home the big wood stuff. We hammer home the, you know, Camerons and the, the prairie stuff, the swamp stuff, yada, yada, yada. You're the ad guy. Would you rather hunt a farm in beans or corn? I would say, just to keep this very simple and brief, I planted 10 acres of beans behind my house this year, but I wish I planted corn. So, <laughs> <laughs> so the reason I planted beans is because I'll probably put it in CRP next year. So I was just trying to get rid of weeds and it's a lot easier to drill in warm season grasses and bean stubble versus corn. But with that being said, I would rather hunt corn because I think there's a lot of cool things that come with that. Not that you want your, your bedding to be food typically, but where I'm at, there's not a lot of cover. So, okay, now I have 10 acres of cover all, with a lot of edge. So I'm going to hold deer more. I'm going to hold more deer this time of year. And then beyond that too, bucks still just pound corn all year. Like the month of November, they don't touch beans. And now beans in an Iowa state where you have a long late season muzzleloader, I could definitely see that. But here in Illinois, I can only think of maybe a really cold muzzleloader season, maybe 10, 12 years ago. And most of the time it's not that great. It's a three day season. So, I mean, really corn is awesome. And uh, I think it provides more opportunities to kill a buck throughout the entire season. If you had to document how many times a mature buck's hanging out in corn or beans, it's going to be more so in corn, in my opinion. And you can, this is a crazy thing here in Illinois, you can't bait, but I could mow my corn. And obviously right before a cold front, if you want to do that and mow a good strip right where you plan on going, I mean, that's a huge advantage if you want to take advantage of, of it. Yeah, I think there's a lot, there's some good insight there. One is thinking about the attraction levels of beans in the early season and then watching it fade away yeah. And not be, you know, not have any power until, like you said, late season in that cold front. Something I did, though, on this 10 acres of beans <clears throat> is I left a giant V, about an acre V in the middle of it in, in association to a bow stand that I plan on having. And I planted a strip of greens uh, that have brassicas, Austrian winter peas, winter rye, winter wheat. And so I have that green food source that's still there. And I have some other green food sources on the farm. But late season archery hunting with a compound bow <laughs> when there's going to be 30 deer in there. And you're trying to kill a buck or two. I, I just prefer a gun. And I think uh, you mow some corn with a gun in coordination to a gun season. I think you should have an opportunity if you want to. If you want to do that, I've always noticed the property seems to be better um, from a volume standpoint of deer on the property. Um, even sometimes, even number of bucks when it's in corn, it seems to be better, and it seems to be better throughout the entire season. I've noticed that on years where a, a farm is in beans, once the beans come out and you start to get into like December and January of the property, they start to migrate to find those cut corn fields is what I've seen. Now, if you can buy an acre of standing beans or maybe the farm, maybe a tree fell um, into the field where the combine had to go out and around and there's a spot that's left with some standing beans or something like that. If you can key in on that, then typically the farm doesn't seem to dry up like it would um, if all the beans were cut off of it. A lot of times I, I just go to the farmers and I'm like, hey, you know, is there, is there a way I could buy an acre of standing beans over here, you know, on, on this side or whatever. Now, I don't know if I want to buy standing beans this year because I'm hearing they're going to be 17 bucks a bushel. So that might change things <laughs> for uh, some of the things that I, I used to do. But I think corn is probably the overall. I, I know a lot of guys don't like the corn early season. I just don't know if they're playing it right. Um, I mean, deer are going to bed in those swales that don't get farmed, that, that get overgrown. They're going to make their way back to the woods. Sometimes it's just... Um, Knowing, knowing where those spots are, um, knowing that there's a good chance of maybe, you know, maybe a particular buck that you got pictures of or, or it's seen, and that's where he's coming from. It's, you're so much better off just walking the perimeter of that entire standing cornfield early season or, or even into, you know, late October into November, if it's still standing and, and maybe try to cut those tracks. Okay, he's coming into that woods at some point. And you just got to figure out where that's at. And I think, I think that's a, that's a deadly tactic to use.